Hey everybody, welcome back to Vidhammer. I am going through the Enox encampment yet again. We'll see how we do this time, but I'm bringing it uh, a little more full force. Both Nargle and Scrunch got themselves blessed by giving donations to the tree, the blessing tree, so that each of them have two of the blessed cards in their deck. Nargle changed his, uh, his card layout a little bit. He's also going to be bringing the Mountain Hammer. I'm going to try to do summons out at the first turn for both of them. Uh, the Mountain Hammer and the Rat Swarm for Scrunch to see if we can't try to burn these guys down a little bit quicker. I've already done the, the events, city events and road events in the city. We rolled some dice, didn't get lucky. Each of them lost five gold. Then on the road we heard some voices and went to check it out and each gained five experience, but lost a check mark each. So that wasn't so good, but we got through it. Uh, also for the perks, uh, Scrunch took Professional, which is using equipment items equal to your level plus two, which will be four times. I looked at it and I'm like, pretty sure he's gonna pull that one off, so I went ahead and went with that one. And with Nargle, I went with Sadist, which is kill five or more monsters, which I figure since I gotta kill 10, five is really his share. He should be able to pull this off, especially if I'm paying attention to it, so. We're about to run through this. I've already got my decisions for the first turn laid out. I'm gonna go late, try to let them come to me and then do our summons and stuff like that. Next turn we can go quick, have our summons go first and all that. Uh, Nargo's going 77, Scrunch is going 79, and these guys, Archer is going first and is gonna lay a trap down at move minus one, attack minus one. The guards are gonna go move plus one, but attack minus one. Pretty sure they're all gonna move up and have enough space to get on Nargle, who with his hide armor, that should not be too much damage, I'm hoping. Then the shaman's gonna go later and do some stuff, and then we're gonna go and do our summons and all that good stuff, and hopefully kick some butt. I'm gonna try to just do as much damage as quick as possible, try to burn these guys down and hopefully Burn through them and get to the door. I'd like to get through there and get the treasure if we've got the ability, but I've already done the full intro in a previous video, so you can go watch that one if you want to. Otherwise, our objective is to kill twice as many monsters as there are people, characters. So we've got to kill off 10 guys, but uh, at the end of every odd turn, a new guy is going to spawn here. Uh, which I've heard some debate on this as to whether it's uh, it will summon in the next available space, but it's not actually a summon. It actually says in the in the book there that it's a spawn. Is the spawn considered a summon? Uh, I don't know, but hopefully we'll be able to kill these guys off fast enough so where it won't become an issue. But I will try to get up there and open that door as quick as I can. And um, we're ready to go, which is going to be the archer first which with his move minus one attack minus one, he's only gonna move one space. He's going to move here. Then happily, he's gonna create a three damage trap in the space closest to an enemy, which will be here, which will make another thing for them to have to go around. The guards will be next and move plus one attack minus one, starting with Mr. Number One. So let's say he comes down here, he will do an attack of three minus one is an attack of two, plus zero, the hide armor will activate and lower that down to one, so he'll take one damage. The next guy will come down with his move three and do his attack. It's an attack of three, minus one is an attack of two, minus another one is an attack of one, and we already have one shield from the hide armor that activated. That doesn't do any damage at all. And the last guy will also move three and do the same thing. It's an attack of two minus one from the hide armor, which means one would go through. The hide armor will trigger a second time, giving him a shield of two. And that's now used up. But no damage gets through. Next up will be the shaman on a move of three. He'll go one, two, three, to try to get himself around the trap. He only has a range of three, so he can't fire off at anybody. And we're over to them. Nargle is gonna be first. And we're going to do a grab and go. 
the bottom part, which will be move four. I'm going to go ahead and use my boots of striding with this to make this a move of six because I'm also doing my balanced measured attack, which is I do an attack equal to the number of hexes I have moved so far this turn. So we're going to go a little roundabout. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm doing an attack of six in your face. We'll also get an experience for that. But that's an attack of six. We'll target that at, let's go to number one, attack of six times two. There's a blessing right off the top. That's an attack of 12. And guard number one dies because they only have nine health. He's out and there's a coin already in his space. But this does not go back into my, into my discard to get shuffled in. Once a blessing comes out, it's out of the game, out of that scenario. So at least a little bit of money well spent there. We did get a kill, which means the Necklace of Teeth will trigger and put him back up to full health. I'm already liking how this is going. Of course, as I say that, now everything's going to go to crap, isn't it? But we're going to stick to our plan. I'm going to go ahead and use the Mountain Hammer to bring out the Hammer Summon right there in that spot. And that will be the end of his turn. We're over to Mr. Scrunch. So we're going to use the bottom of Feedback Loop to do a move four. Move forward and grab that coin. Then we're going to use the top half of Gnawing Horde to consume this card and bring out a Rat Swarm right there. We also get two experience in the process. But that card is used up and we're ready to go for the next round. Let's do some stuff. His shield wears off, but hey, not looking too bad. Let's uh, let's try to do some beatdown, see if we can get it. All right, we got our choices. We're going to try to go pretty quick. Eight for Scrunch, 27 for Nargle. And let's see about our dudes up here as I smack the board around. Mr. Shaman, nobody's getting reshuffled. So Mr. Shaman's going at nine, and he's going to curse, targeting two people. That's not so fun. I'm going to have to look at the rules, see what happens when you curse a summon. Archer is going 16, move plus one, attack minus one. I'm fine with them doing less damage. And our remaining guards are going to go 55. Move minus one, attack zero, and strengthen. But hopefully we'll do a lot of damage and maybe they won't, uh, they won't be around to enjoy that strength in the next round. Yep, looks like if you curse a summon, it goes into the controlling person's deck. So we'll have curses on standby, because stuff's about to happen. We've got everybody set, ready to go, and it looks like Scrunch is going to be just before the Shaman. So the Summon will go first. It's going to attack number Enoch's Guard number three. It's just an attack of two, so it's going to do two damage, and it's going to poison. Next is going to be Scrunch himself. He's going to go ahead and bring out the Mind's Weakness to give him plus two on his melee attacks. He's going to do a melee attack on guard number three. That's going to gain him an experience in the process. And we got an attack of three with poison. That makes it four. Plus zero It's just going to be an attack of four. That means he's at six right now. So we're going to do Perverse Edge, the bottom, to do an attack on number six, which will be a stun. And this is an attack of one. He doesn't get his bonus because it's not a melee attack. Plus one, though. It's two damage on number six. And we'll bring out some frost. And we'll gain an experience. And he is stunned. And then we're going to have the shaman go next. At a... So one, two, three. Yes, he will move here. We will move him there. One, two, three. He will target two things. So he will target there and then... Uh, I guess the next target actually would be Scrunch, so I think they're taking both the hits. The first one going to the Rat Swarm is an attack minus one. Normally an attack of three, so it's an attack of two. Minus one is an attack of one, so Rat Swarm gets hit for one, but that's one curse card in the deck. And then an attack to Scrunch for two, which was going to be a miss. But I will get two cursed cards in Scrunch's attack deck, which I really don't like. That guy sucks. So my deck is soiled now, but we're moving to the Archer next. Move plus one, attack minus one. So his move is a three. One, two, three. His range is still 
a range of three, which one, two, three, you don't have enough to get there. Sorry, dude, no attack for you. And we are over to Mr. Nargal. Nargal is going to try to attack. Actually, before Nargal attacks, the Mountain Hammer is going to go first. Mountain Hammer has an attack of three, plus one. That's an attack of four, going at number six. Then it is actually Nargal's turn, and we're going to do Leaping Cleave first. We're going to do an attack three at both of them in the template. It's going to give us an attack, a one experience. And we're going to double shot here and hopefully do some decent stuff. First, we've got three damage going up against number three, which is just straight three damage. Uh, plus the poison would be an attack of four. Plus six is actually attack of ten. He goes down. Bam. Then the next shot on number six, again an attack of three. Plus one is an attack of four. Plus the six that are there. That's ten. You are also down. I am liking this. I've got the bottom half of Spare Dagger, which I was going to use just to do an attack, which now I think I will do a move of two and just get up into the Shaman's Grill so we can get ready to put some hurt on him. Go ahead and get up there. We could grab the coins, but get in position. Get in position, do damage. That's what matters. All right, just use that for a move two. And with Necklace of Teeth, he would have gotten two more hit points, but he hasn't lost anything. My dudes haven't lost. I've taken one damage so far. But this this is not the Enox encampment that I remember. Uh, over to them, the guards are actually down. But there should have been, at the end of turn one, a new regular guy, regular guard, should have spawned there. So now, on turn two, which is what it is, I've got to remember to do that, he will actually take his action, which is a move minus one. He has a move of one, so he will move one to move away. So we did have the guards, and he will strengthen himself as well. And that's a new number six. Welcome to the party, number six. I hope you die. And that's it. Next turn. So next round, I'm going to go ten for Nargle and eleven for Scrunch. Just afterwards, uh, trying to do things nice and tight here. We'll see. Mr. Shaman is going 23, and he will heal himself, or he will heal 3 at a range of 3, but he's not going to be doing an attack. Monsieur Archer is going 32, getting a little less to his range, but more to his attack. And our guard is not going until 70, and only moving 1. Okay, have fun back there, dude. We are up first, and we're going to do all our stuff, starting with Mr. Nargol. Our summon will move one closer, but summons don't pick up coins, unfortunately. Uh, then we are going to do bottom of trample in order to move to, to here. Ooh, I forgot. In Sadist, even though Necklace of Teeth didn't trigger, he still killed two more. He's got all the kills so far. Good job, you little Sadist. Uh, anyway, we're doing an attack of two. Minus one is only an attack of one, but it is a disarm at the Shaman. And then we're over to Scrunch, where the Gnawing Horde, our summon, will go forward. One, an attack first, an attack of two, plus two is an attack of four. And we will poison him, so that'll bring him up to five damage. And you are poisoned. And then he will get to do his turn. We're going to use the... Bottom of Empathetic Assault to move two, even though we won't get a heal out of that. We moved when we needed to because we're going to do the top for Fearsome Blade, gain an experience, attack of two, melee attack of two, and push three. So the melee attack of two with mine's weakness is four, plus the poisoned, that's an attack of five, plus one more, that's an attack of six. That's eleven damage. He's dead. We don't even need to push him into the trap. He just dies. Splat. You're gone, buddy. Send me a postcard, sucker. Mr. Shaman is down, but Mr. Archer is going to go first. Uh, move plus one, attack plus one, range minus one. So he's going to step back one to get out of disadvantage. And we will need to reshuffle our deck here. So that guy is good to go. Also important to note, we are on the third turn, so another guy will come out at the end of this turn. 
Archer is taking his attack at attack plus one. So normally he has a two, now he has an attack of three. Minus one is just still an attack of two, so he will go back down to ten. And that's all for the archer. Then we've got our guard. Our guard is going to move minus one, so he only has a move of one. He gets rid of his strength now at the end of his turn. And it's now the end of the turn, so another guard will pop out right there. And we are going. Next turn. All right, for next turn, Scratch is going to go 14. Nargle's at 18. We're going to try to get that guy into the trap if we can, the archer. Archer, who will be going at 68 for attack plus one, range plus one, but not moving. And then our guards at 35 who will be doing a ranged attack. Move minus one, so they're only going to move one, and their attack range is going to be two. So if I stay three away from them, I'll be okay. So I think I can stay out of the range of those guys. Now uh, they're not going until 35 and 68, which means that Mr. Squatch is going to be first, which means this guy is going to go first, and he will move up. Then he will go, and it was far too tempting not to do loot one with End of the Night. So we will pick up that coin, and that coin, and that coin, and Nargle will give Scrunch a big middle finger as he grabs all them coins. Uh, we also should have four on our Sadist, since uh, he... No, we don't have four on the Sadist. We have three on the Sadist. What we have is four on the kill counter. We need to have a separate counter going for how many things we have killed this game. One, two, three, four. Nargle's killed three of them, but not all of them. But, that's top part of his, and the bottom part, we're going to force a enemy within ranged four, one, two, three, four, to make a move one with you controlling the action. Hey, buddy, have fun in your own trap, taking three damage. Good job. You enjoyed that, didn't you? That's why he makes those traps, just to jump in them. He looks to Nargle and says, Who's the status now, suckers? Well, you're... I don't know. You, you got issues. That's all I know. Then we're going over to Mr. Nargle himself. Nargle will have this guy move one forward first. Then he's going to go ahead. And, oh, since he moved over, now we can't do that shot straight along the line, can we? No, we need to do a move. And you stay outside of range three, so that's fine. We can go right there with uh, eye for an eye, bottom of eye for an eye. And then for the top, we'll do a skewer through him for an attack of three plus an experience. We don't have the extra because there's no wind out. But attack of three minus two, oh, isn't that nice? Okay, so we hit him for one. Lovely. One more. There you go, buddy. Guards are up first. They're going to move one and attack at a range of two. So he's gonna move one, and he's gonna move one. Attack at a range of two, which isn't gonna be enough to hit anything. Sorry, guys. Uh, the archer is next. He will have an attack plus one, range plus one, but um, he's not able to move, so he can't get away from his disadvantage. So even though he has an attack of three, he's at disadvantage, ooh, times two, or zero. We'll take the zero. Thank you very much. It is still an attack of three, though. That'll take him down to seven. And that's it. Next round. Okay, so it's just the last of their original cards. He's going at nine. Or Scratch going at nine. Nargo going at 32. The guards going at 50. Move plus zero, attack plus zero. And our archer... It's 56, attack minus one, targeting two. Hopefully he'll be dead. I'm pretty sure we can make him dead. But mm, Scrunchy's going first, and Scrunchy going first means that the summon will go first. He's going to move up, do his attack of two, plus zero. It's attack of two, but it does have poison. We'll go ahead and do our top action hostile takeover. An attack of two at range four with Immobilize will bring out some stuff, we'll gain an experience. But most importantly, we'll do an attack of two plus the poison. That makes an attack of three 
plus nothing, that's still enough, and takes out the Enox Archer. Enox Archer down. One more kill type for Mr. Scrunch. He likes that. And that dude is dead. But his bottom half for Frigid Apparition, we're just gonna step forward a couple of spaces. There we go. We could do Boots of Striding or something. We're about to take a long rest. So, and he doesn't have any damage? Sure, we'll use Boots of Striding to move two more just to get him on top of that coin so he can turn to his buddy and say, hey, hey, did you want some money? I got lots of money over here. Sucker! Next is Nargle, who's ticked about not getting any money. We're gonna do... Ooh, bottom half of Juggernaut just as a move two, I guess. Yeah, just do a move two. One and two. And then we'll do our warding strength to attack this guy with a push and push him through the dangerous terrain to mess him up a little bit more. First, the Warhammer, a mountain hammer, should have gone though and moved forward one space. Then he goes, does his move, and now does his attack of three. So that's three damage because I don't have any shield. And a push, he will take half of trap damage, which is two. So we'll end up taking five total for Mr. Enox Guard, number six. Dunk. And that is all for him. Then we've got the archer. Unfortunately, the archer has passed away. So the guard's up next on a move plus zero, attack plus zero. Number one will move first. So he'll go forward and do an attack with our deck once it gets reshuffled. An attack plus zero, so a normal attack of three on Mr. Nargle. The other one is going to take up and take a chop shot at Scrunch since he's got the faster initiative. But here's our chop of three on Nargle. Minus two, that's an attack of one. He's fine with that. And the other one will have step into this space. Do an attack on Scrunch again for three. Zero on it, so he simply takes the three. So that should be the end of round five, since they've cleared through all of their cards. That should be the end of round five, which means another guard should be spawning in this spot. And more importantly, they are down to no cards left. So they're each going to take a short rest and get rid of a card as well. And then we'll roll into the next turn. Okay, for our next turn... Scrunch is going 11, Nargle at 18, and the guards at 50 again. Move plus zero, attack plus is exactly what they did last time. All right. Thanks for being original, guys. Scrunch is up first, which means Rat Swarm will try to get around there. Then yeah, we're going to have him do move to heal to. We're going to move there. And heal two to ourselves to get him back up to six at least. Then we'll do Frigid Apparition to consume that. Do an attack three with stun and gain an experience. I always like the experience out of that. Uh, attack of three, it's a melee attack, so it's plus two, makes an attack of five. Plus zero, a straight up attack of five. Number six, already had taken five. He only had four left. He is dead. Dead things make me happy. Nargle is next at 18. He's going to heal himself for two to gain a little bit back for bottom of uh, eye for an eye. And then we're going to do Warding Strength, attack of three with a push of two to push him into the dangerous terrain. Uh, attack of three plus one, that's an attack of four. And then we'll push him here and here, and he will take two more damage going through there. So he will take six damage total for number one. Suck it, buddy. And... That's all for them. Back to the guards. Move plus zero, which means they have a move of two. This guy, because of where he'd been pushed, he's actually going to try to go after Mr. Scrunch. That's not so great, but oh well, it's what we did. Okay, you're going to move there and take your chop shot of three times two is six. Oh, that means I gotta discard a card. What a butt. Should've used Cloak of Invisibility or something. Just had to push him into that dangerous terrain. Couldn't have pushed him over there by the other guy. Thanks a lot, Nargle. And then Nargle looks over and says, well, thanks for taking all the money, dude. It's what you get. 
So we can discard a guard, sucker. And we had another kill as well, which means our kill tracker should be up to five at this point, because we've killed three original guards, the shaman and the archer, and one guard that spawned out. So our spawn, our, our kill counter should be at six, not at five. And we have to do the same thing with number four. He's got to move up and do his stuff on a, just a move of two, but he is going to move... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. He's equidistant from both, which means he's actually going to move towards Scrunch if he can, which he can. He'll move two up there, and that will be end of that turn. Scrunch needs help. I think he's going to go invisible. Sounds like a good idea. I actually don't remember if I moved that on Nargle's turn, but if I didn't, I should have moved that at the beginning of Nargle's turn. We'll try to remember these things. All right, I think we got a decent strategy. Scratch is going to go real fast at 8. Nargo is going to go slow at 77, hoping that things will uh, be stunned in front of us. The guards who haven't done anything original lately, they're going to shield and attack plus 0 with poison at 15. Well, maybe they won't get a chance to do all that. Because Mr. Scrunchy is up first, which means first our summon's going to move forward. Then he's going to do some stuff. He's going to do an attack two with a push of three melee attack on number one. Which, since it's a melee attack, he gets plus two more, so he has an attack of four. We're going to go ahead and use our poison dagger because we need to use up some items before we get like fully exhausted or whatever. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use that. That's an attack of four, which is a miss. He still gets poisoned, though. Doop. He is poisoned. And we will do the attack of nothing. Uh, we still get our experience for that. Doop. And we get our... That's the top part of Fearsome Blade. Then we're doing the bottom part of Perverse Edge on the other guy, number four, which is going to be a stunning attack. Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do this on the other guy. Uh, it is a stun attack, an attack of 1, minus 2, which is an attack of 0, since it's ranged, there's no bonuses or anything. But it is a stun attack, so that guy will be stunned. Number 4. And we get our experience, and blue is going to come out end of our turn, but we don't do any other cool stuff. And then we're going to use our Cloak of Invisibility, so that we go invisible. See ya! Jink! Jink! would rather not be attacked by anything. Thank you very much. That puts us over to the guards at 15. Uh, number one is stunned, can't go this way, so he will uh, not move. They're not moving at all. And they would attack, but there's nothing for him to attack. The other guy would shield and attack, but he is stunned, so no, you're not going to do any of that, which means you're not going to have your shield when Mr. Nargle goes. This guy's going to move forward one. And then he is going to move four for one, two, three, four, and then do an attack of four with balanced measure, since he's attacking for as much as he moved, which is just straight an attack of four. So he will take four damage. That is the end of turn seven. We should have that to waning. And uh, end of turn seven means another guard should come out there. And uh, we're over to the next round. All right, we've got our next turn planned. Let's see what... Uh, Scrunch is going to go at 9, Nargle at 35. Guards at 50, move plus 0, attack plus 0. Okay, that works out well for us. Which means Scrunch is going to go first at 9, which means the summon will try to move around. Then he is going to go invisible again for the bottom of Into the Night. And for the top of Hostile Takeover, he's going to do an attack of 2, range 4, and immobilize. So he's going to mobilize number 4. Uh, it's ranged attack. I shuffled my deck, but put it back on top of my other deck. I will shuffle all of that back together. And we'll do an attack of 2. It's ranged attack, so I don't have any bonuses to it. But we bring out some blue, gain some experience. Boink. And number 4 will be immobilized. Doo -doo. Here's our attack. Attack of two plus two is an attack of four. And that's on number four, who had already taken four. So he only has one health left. Boy. 
That was a hefty shot. That wasn't even a, a blessing. That was just straight up plus two. Uh, next will be Mr. Nargo. And Mr. Nargo is going to have his dude come forward one. And then he is going to jump three. One, two, three. And it'd be nice if that air actually came out right now. But it doesn't. It doesn't come out to the end of his turn. But he moved three because now, yeah, we're going to do the shot skewer attack three in the line and if win was out it'd be even better but uh, unfortunately we don't have that right now uh we're attacking number one it's an attack of three and he is poisoned so that's an attack of four number one is dead he had six damage that puts him to ten and he only has nine so that guy's down Doot. and this is turn eight then the next guy, number four, again, attack of three, just straight three plus one. That's an attack of four, and he only had one health left, so he is dead as well. He killed two people, though. Necklace of Teeth triggers twice, bringing up to ten. Sadist triggers twice more. He has killed five things now, and we have killed two more enemies. That puts us at five, six, seven, eight. We only need to kill two more. There's a dude right there, and I want to open that door. If I don't get the door opened, another guard will spawn there. And I would rather get that door open at the end of next turn. Don't know if I'll be able to do it, though, because he's going to need a long rest. And I don't think I've got the movement cards I need. But uh, but uh, that doesn't even matter. We've still got to do the guard's turn. Guard's got to do their turn. Move plus zero, attack plus zero. So he's going to move two. Let's see. One, two, three, four. But... No, he had, an, he had an initiative of nine. One, two, three, four. So he will go this way. One, two. And try to attack but not be within range. Now we can think about what we're going to do next round. So going into turn number nine now. Scrunch is getting a long rest. Nargle's going to go at 72. And our guard... Is going to go at 15, shield and retaliate to. Okay, not going to move, but, uh, oh, well, eh, guess it is what it is. He will go first, he will shield up, he now is going to retaliate as well. Then next shot is going to be Mr. Nargle, who is going to burn this card to move four in a jump. I have to go in a straight line, one, two, three, four, to get right there. He would attack two, target all enemies, move through, but uh, he can't do that. He does gain two experience, though. And he will jump all the way up and open that door, which means nothing is going to spawn at the end of this turn. Okay, we've got us an elite archer in business. We'll be going at 32. Move plus zero, attack plus one at range minus one. I can't move, though, so... I'm a sitting duck and he's going to hit me, but uh, I can do this one. I could try to attack the guy who's shielded. I might as well just attack the the archer. Do some damage. I'm going to have to kill her eventually anyway. All right. We'll use that. Attack three at range three. She's within range three. We're doing attack of three. It's a miss anyway, so who gives a butt nugget? But we gain experience. Then the archer's going to go. Step up one and take the shot with an attack plus one on normally an attack of four. That's an attack of five. Plus zero. Taking five, taking going from ten damage down to five. That's not, uh, not the perfect sauce. We need to pull back and make that little bastard come out and step through one of those traps at least. That would be nice. I also should have moved this at the beginning of Nargo's turn. But Nargo went, the guards are going, the archer is going. Scrunch is up next at his long rest, which means this guy will go forward first and now try to take a punch shot at a dude who's shielded and retaliating. Plus zero on an attack of two means he's going to do one damage, but also poison guard number three. And then guard number three is going to retaliate for two, so the rat swarm is now down to half of its health. And end of the long rest, so he's going to go back up and get some cards back. Except for Cloak of Invisibility, which is gone. And 
We lose a card, and we're over to our next turn. Okay, I think we got our next round ready. Nargo's gonna go 10, Scratch is gonna go 11. Archer is going 16, move plus one attack, minus one. And our guard should have been reshuffled. But the important thing is that the archer is going after the other guys. Which means I think what I wanted to have happen is going to happen. Yep, we're going to be far enough away he's going to have to move into a trap in order to get closer. And he has no other thing he can do, so yes, he will have to move into the trap. The guard is going to move minus one attack plus one, but not until 70. Hopefully he will not even be alive. So Nargle is up first. He's going to use the top part of Juggernaut to do a move two and then an attack of two. He's going to move two, one, two, and then he's going to do an attack of two at guard number three. And we should have done a reshuffle for his deck as well since he hit the miss. Hopefully we'll do a little bit of damage. Uh, it'll be fine. Should be enough to where Scrunch can go in for the kill. He still needs to kill an Enox guard for his long-term long -term goal. But anyway, we're doing an attack of two. Minus one is an attack of one, but it has poison. So it's actually an attack of three. Minus one is a uh, two damage. So he's at three. Then he'll use the second part, the bottom of Provoking Roar, to move two more. And he's going to pull back one more to there. One, two, three, yes. Regardless of what happens, he's still at range five. So, yep. That's where I wanted him. And this guy should have moved at the start of his turn. Then the Scratch is going to be next, which means this guy goes first. He's already within range, so he'll just stand there and take a shot at number three. At a damage of two, plus one is three, plus the poison makes it four damage. And I'm going to take one off, put a five on. He's taking a good amount. Uh, he's already poisoned, so he doesn't do any more poison. That's it for him. Then we've got Mr. Scrunch himself, who is going to do a first move two, and he's going to go into the dangerous terrain and lose two health, but then he heals two to himself. So, uh... Actually, yes, Dangerous Terrain, the trap damage is four. Dangerous Terrain is only half of that for two. So he takes two damage, but he heals himself for two. Uh, he is not going to be invisible at the end of this. But then he's going to do an attack two melee with a push of three and gain an experience for it. Attack of two, plus one is an attack of three, and it's poisoned, that's four. Uh, he also had Mind's Weakness, so his attack actually would be an attack of six. He only had two damage left, so that guy is dead. And Scrunch gets a kill on an Enox guard as well. And we've got one more death to our total. We only need one more. Hey, look, we've got a Shaman right there. I want to get that treasure first, though. Scrunch is halfway through his trophy hunt now. He's killed 10 out of the 20 individual things he needs to kill. But... Uh, the archer needs to go now. He has a move of plus one, so there's a movement of three. The range is four, and nobody is within range four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, four, four. Nobody is within range four, so the only way for him to get closer is to move into a trap. So he is going to step into this trap and take four trap damage and then move, since you have a normal move, get a move of three. So one, two, three, I guess you'll go right there. Welcome to the club, dude. And uh, then you're gonna take your shot. Scrunch went later, Nargle went first, so him himself is the closest one at lowest initiative. So normal attack of four, minus one is an attack of three. Minus another one is just an attack of two. So he will take two hits. It's down to three health. I definitely need to chug that health potion and get ready to do some stuff. So Nargle took a short rest at the end of that turn. We're going to go nine for Scrunch and 87 for Nargle. And our archer 
is going to be going 14 and creating a 3 damage trap in the process. Our objective now is I want to get that treasure and I want to loot money and not kill this guy. But I got two summons coming up that are probably going to get the job done. So I need to kind of get things done quick. So we're going to try to do that. Mr. Scrunch is going first, which means first up is going to be these little dudes. He's going to step forward. We'll have you step forward here. And then do a shot. Attack 2, this guy is not poisoned. Minus 2, which is an attack of 0, but it is poison, so it will poison this guy. So Scrunch is up next, and I'm not going to have him do the top part of this card. I think it's going to be too much damage, and we'll end up killing the Shah, the uh, Archer, too soon. Instead, we'll just do the bottom half of Frigid Apparition with a move 4. I'm going to use my Boots of Striding to make that a move of 6, and that will also give him four item uses for this. It's going to burn this card and give me an experience, but it's going to allow me to hop forward six and go one, two, three, four, five, six, and hopefully grab that treasure next turn. Uh, we'll also go ahead and use a stamina potion to get two cards back. So we'll go ahead and take, uh, take these two back into his hand. That'll be the end of his turn. That was at nine. Next we're over to the actual archer himself. Move minus one, so he will try to get away from the summon. He'll move back one. Then he'll do an attack, and then he'll create a damage trap. And the damage trap will go right there. And uh, his attack is attack of four. Minus one is an attack of three. Not my deck. His deck. Ooh, three times two is six, and the summon is down. Boom. All right. Rat Swarm, you did a good job, dude. Did a lot of stuff. Can't feel bad about your success there, but you are dead. Then we're over to him, which that guy's going to move forward first. Then the rest for Nargle is he's going to jump three, one, two, three, and then loot at a range of one. Nom, 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 nom. Just tick the happy coins because he needs some happy coins everybody needs some happy coins let's reshuffle some decks and get ready for next turn oh the one thing i did want to do uh end of nargle's turn use his minor healing potion to heal himself for three to get himself back up to six and that guy is used there we go all right well we're in range for end game here Scratch is going to go at 9, Nargle at 18, and hopefully grab the treasure. We might kill the guy off of this turn, but he's going to be going at 68. Attack plus 1, range plus 1. It's going to be kind of a beefy hit, but okay, let's start off with Mr. Scratch. We don't have a summon anymore, but we're going to do an attack of 2, range 4, with Immobilize. It's a ranged attack, so it doesn't give us plus 2. It's just an attack of 2. Plus zero, but there's poison, so it's actually an attack of three. Uh, so we'll straight up take three. We'll take two off, give him a five, and give him an immobilize. And uh, wind should have come out when Nargle did his jump last time, and now it goes down to winning, which will be important for what he's going to do later. But that was hostile takeover. The bottom part will be the empathetic assault. Move two and heal two. He's already at full, but he will move two onto that treasure and loot it, and we'll see what that is. Treasure 65. Horned Helm design. Item number 107. Now we're over to Mr. Nargo, who first, that guy will move up. Then he himself is going to do an attack of three with a skewer through that line. We're going to use that to make it an attack of four. He is poisoned, so that's an attack of 5. Minus 1 is an attack of 4. 5, that's 11 total, which is exactly his health. Yep, 4, plus 1, 5, and another 5, 10, plus 1, that's 11. That's it. He is down. Poof. Which drops a coin into his spot, which means this will be the last turn of the game. He gains an experience for that, by the way. Which means, uh, since there's nothing else doing, 
he's going to walk through that trap and pick up that coin. Or he can walk through the dangerous terrain and pick up the coin. Either way, he's going to walk through something. He's just going to use that as a move to... And, uh, ooh, he had Necklace of Teeth went off when he killed that guy, which gives him one more experience. Yay! And, uh, yeah, he'll walk through the dangerous terrain for two damage, or walk through the pit for three damage, because that was one of the extra ones made. Either way, he's got seven damage. He's got enough to take it. He'll take it. He'll pick up the coin. And that will successfully end... The, I can't even stack my coins. Jeez. That will successfully end the Enoch's encampment. On try three, and this seemed a bit like a butt whip. Now that we have ten things killed, yay! Now I can actually read the conclusion and go on with like parts of the game. It was definitely a big help having these two summon dudes out early and just let them go in, and, and especially with the rat doing a little bit of poison that helped everybody else do damage. That was nice. I, I gotta admit, even though that mountain hammer really didn't look like much, I mean, for 50 gold, it could sell that for 25 right there. But, uh, not bad. I mean, we only got through one blast... Okay. I shuffled these cards. Both of his blessings were on bottom. I was gonna say... I bought and paid for four blessing cards. I only ever saw one. How close to the bottom was the other one? Okay, that one was coming up before the miss, but it was, yeah, no. We're gonna have to tie the times two before that. And we have the Helm of Horniness. That's awesome. Ooh, let's read our exciting conclusion. Running through the forest, fleeing the smell of burning flesh, you now find more than enough opportunity to contemplate your actions. How your actions sit with you must be visible on your face as you meet once more with Jexera, this time in her manner. She hands you a sack of coins with a frown. They were thieves and murderers, she says blankly. They deserved what you gave them. And that is all I will say of the matter. I have one more task I would like you to perform. I require a diamond of considerable size for a customer but I cannot find one anywhere in the city. There is a diamond mine, however, in the southern mountains, long since lost to the wilderness. I've heard reports that it is now overrun with vermlings, no doubt with some other more intelligent force behind them. If you can find your way in and grab the biggest diamond you can find, I will give you a considerable reward. Now leave me in peace. Jaxera's two massive Enoch's bodyguards step forward, directing you to leave the manor. Outside, contemplating your new task, you hear a small voice behind you. She's not looking for profit, you know. You turn around and see a female quadril step out of the alley beside Jaxera's house. She's clad in dark leather armor and holds a conspicuous contraption full of whirring gears and topped with a conical metal piece connected to a tube. Argis, city guard, she says, introducing herself. I know I don't exactly look the part, but if anyone isn't what they appear to be, it's that Valrath you've been talking to. Sure, she's a merchant, but she's up to something far more sinister. She's been trying to overthrow the military in Gloomhaven for as long as I've been here, and we're all very curious about what her current machinations are. Look, you can go do her bidding like a good little puppy if you want, but if you'd rather actually help this town keep the peace and not get overrun by the wilds, I have a different idea. We'll get to the bottom of Jaxera's plans and expose her for who she really is. So, party achievement, Jaxera's plans. We have two new possible locations. Either we can do as Jaxera mentioned and go to the diamond mine and steal her one, or we can go to the Gloomhaven warehouse and try to find out what's been going on. We also get 15 gold each, and we gain one prosperity. Yay! Of course, now I'm looking at my track record, realizing I already got that treasure last time. I already had those plans, didn't need to go up there, but doesn't matter. We did it anyway. Oh well.
we still get our 15 gold. We got some money. We got some experience. Scrunch is going to level up. I'm not sure if Nargle is going to get there, but uh, yeah, Town hasn't gone to Prosperity Level 2 yet, but we're, we're chucking along. It looks like we've got a couple of choices. We will look into that and see what's going to happen next time. Hope you enjoyed this one and keep playing.